Oops, I lied. About the nature of good intentions, episode 10. Sorry everyone, I said this episode was going to be about a Jackie Chan game, but I had my release dates mixed up. We'll get to Mr. Chan in due time, but for now, the topic du jour is Ice Climber. I don't know if it was simply coincidence or the result of a deliberate creative mandate, but for many of Nintendo's early NES and Famicom games, they appeared in pairs. For example, you had Maze Chase Devil World, and then, about a month later, Nintendo published Clue Clue Land. F1 Race brought the racing genre to the NES, then four weeks later, Excitebike debuted. And now we have Ice Climber, which feels like nothing so much as a binary twin to Mario Brothers. There's a pattern at work with these game sets. One half of each pair was designed by Shigeru Miyamoto, and the other half wasn't. I don't really know how game development processes worked at Nintendo in those days, but if you told me that different internal teams were constantly racing to outdo one another by building distinct games around the same set of concepts, I'd believe it. This trend even continued beyond the early NES era with Metroid. That Nintendo R&D 1 game basically bolted together Miyamoto's Super Mario Bros. side-scrolling with The Legend of Zelda's adventure and RPG elements. But that's a story for another time. For now, with Ice Climber, we have a cooperative two-player platformer based around jumping and interference from foes. It feels for all the world like an alternate spin on the basic premise of the original Mario Brothers. Ice Climber even maintains Mario Brothers jump physics, which is unfortunate because the game revolves entirely around jumping as you endeavor to reach the pinnacle of a series of mountains. Your protagonists here leap in high, shallow arcs with a bit of lag to their response and some very, very fussy platform edge detection. Making a successful jump in this game requires a lot of practice and a sincere effort at mastery, which turns the whole affair into a bit of a slog. One of the keys to the success and timelessness of Super Mario Bros. was that its jump mechanics felt so intuitive, so effortless, that bounding across the Mushroom Kingdom became sheer joy. Ice Climber, on the other hand, turns jumping into an endless font of frustration and anger. Much like the bulk of Kid Icarus, Ice Climber scrolls vertically, one way, upward. Missing a platform, falling off the screen amounts to death and many stages feature tiny little footholds from which a plunge becomes almost inevitable. It's a maddening game, and I suspect it works a lot better if you approach it from the perspective of its original release in very early 1985, when the world had yet to witness the majesty of Super Mario Bros. The real kicker? While Ice Climber was designed by Tadashi Sugiyama and directed by Kenji Miki, Shigeru Miyamoto supervised production, and Super Mario Bros. programmer Toshihiko Nakago helped code it. One can only assume that this project was fresh in their mind as they began work on that seminal masterpiece. Let's never make a game whose controls suck that hard, they vowed in agreement in the theater of my imagination. Anyway, it's not really fair to bag on Ice Climber simply because the single most important game mechanic on which everything else hinges feels clumsy and primitive. Look beyond the fact that it plays a little bit like it hates you, and you'll find some fun elements. For starters, it manages to maintain that delirious weirdness that so many 8-bit Japanese games had. Ice Climber begins with a pterodactyl abducting an eggplant and whisking it away to the top of a snowbound mountain. Your mission is to climb to the top of several dozen mountains, reclaim your fruit, and, well, I guess that's it. If you beat the final mountain, the game simply repeats from stage one. Each mountain features the same general structure. You begin at the bottom, climb up about two screens, hit the midpoint of the stage to begin the bonus round, and attempt to make the summit before time runs out. The lower half of the mountain isn't timed, though a polar bear will amble along to force the screen to scroll upward if you take too long to advance, and so long as you reach the bonus round, you'll advance to the next mountain even if you slip and fall afterwards. Bonus rounds differ in layout depending on the mountain you're at, but no matter which level you begin on, you always collect the same fruit and vegetable bonuses in sequence, beginning with eggplants. If you manage to collect all five ears of corn in the fifth bonus round, you'll earn a 1-up. Although unless you're jockeying for a high score, 1-ups aren't particularly important in this game, since you can begin straight away from any level. But scoring is the point. Ice Climber presents itself as a race to the top and to dominate the leaderboards, and it's really much more entertaining when played with two people. One person grappling with the awkward jump physics is frustration. Two people trying to outperform each other with the same built-in handicap is hilarious. As with many early NES games, Nintendo gave Ice Climber a pretty hefty overhaul for the Versus system. Versus Ice Climber really plays up the two-player rivalry. 
The 24 mountains you can tackle in the arcade version display a different icon after you complete them, depending on how you perform. You see player 1 or player 2's icon denoting a clear mountain conquered by one or the other player, depending on who earned the most points, and an enemy icon means the mountain was cleared but both players failed to complete the bonus round. Unsurprisingly, Nintendo released Versus Ice Climber for Famicom Disk System toward the end of 1988. While it doesn't feature nearly so many changes as Versus Excite Bike, it nevertheless changes things up with enhanced music, more animation, and the level conquest icon screen at the end of each mountain. Unlike Versus Excite Bike and Clue Clue Land D, however, Nintendo has never released this adaptation of the game internationally. Whichever version of Ice Climber you play, the basic experience feels much the same. You control one of a pair of parka-clad kids wielding a mallet. Both kids, named Popo and Nana, can leap high and chip away overhead blocks by smashing into them, perhaps the inspiration for Mario's blockbusting skills in Super Mario Bros. You can also knock out overhead enemies by leaping into them, though this requires some skill as you'll be knocked out instead if you hit the monster or hazard with your head rather than your mallet. Chipping away at blocks plays a key role in Ice Climber, as your goal is to reach the top of each mountain, and many stages have screen-spanning floors that obstruct your path. You need to break away portions of the ceiling above in order to leap to the higher levels. This task is made more difficult by a number of complications that appear along the way. Small birds will wander around overhead, potentially spoiling your jumps by circling overhead at inopportune moments. More vexing are the little white fuzzballs, called topi. They patrol different levels of the mountain in search of gaps in the floor. When a topi scouts a hole, it scurries back to its cave at the side of the screen and re-emerges with an ice pile that it uses to restore two blocks of the floor at a time. As Popo and Nana can only break away a single block per leap, preventing topies from filling in the gaps faster than you can create them becomes difficult, especially for a single player. In fact, it goes from difficult to infuriating once you reach higher stages, where you have to stage your jumps to reach higher levels from moving platforms or tiny bits of floor that work like conveyor belts. There is a certain satisfaction that comes from thwarting topies, either by smashing them directly with a mallet or simply breaking out the floor from beneath them and causing them to plummet to their doom. These few elements, breakable and unbreakable floors, birds, topies, moving platforms, conveyor belts, the annoying polar bear, and bonus fruit, comprise the entirety of the Ice Climber sandbox. Each level is simply a more challenging arrangement of these concerns than the last. And it's reasonably entertaining, provided you can play with a friend. Ice Climber isn't a timeless classic by any means, but it does seem to hold a certain nostalgic sway over gamers of a certain age. Popo and Nana and other Ice Climber elements have appeared in numerous iterations of Smash Brothers, including as tricky, conjoined, playable characters in Smash Brothers Brawl, though they were dropped from Smash 4, to some fan outrage, due to the limitations of the 3DS. The game is fairly well regarded and has been reissued many times over, in Animal Crossing, for e-reader, for the classic NES series on GBA, and on every iteration of Virtual Console. Taken alone, Ice Climber is merely a blip in history. Regarded in tandem with Wrecking Crew, however, it really does paint a picture of how Nintendo kicked around ideas of varying merit in order to attempt to create a proper Mario Bros. follow-up. Super Mario Bros. looms large over Good Nintentions 1985, and it really does feel like nearly everything Nintendo developed and published prior to that game's creation was simply building up to that masterpiece. Super Mario has become such an integral part of video gaming it can be difficult to understand why it has such impact in the first place, but Ice Climber gives it essential context. Prior to Super Mario Bros., the fussy, uncooperative jumping controls and platforming design of Ice Climber wasn't simply acceptable, it was about as good as it got. But once Mario journeyed to the Mushroom Kingdom, things would change forever. That does leave poor Ice Climber stranded as a bit of a relic, but at least it has cooperative play to help dull the sharp sting of obsolescence. Next on Good Intentions, Ice Climber's companion effort to figure out how to make a worthwhile Mario Bros. sequel.